This is the plaintiff, David Miller. He says he sold the defendant a pickup truck, and the guy promised to pay him monthly until the $4,840 was paid in full. The guy's giving him excuse after excuse. He was just trying to help the defendant because he was down on his luck. And now he's here having to sue him for the $2,050 he still owed. This is the defendant, Daniel. He says he agreed to buy the truck because the plaintiff's business partner promised him a lot of work, clearing trees from 32 lots of land. The guy was full of it. He didn't make the money he was promised, but was still paying it off little by little until the plaintiff stole the truck off his property. Bottom line, if anyone's owed money today, it is not the plaintiff. He's accused of trucking his way into court. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff sold his truck to the defendant the guy fell behind in the payments and ultimately stopped paying and he wants his money. But the defendant says he agreed to buy the truck because the plaintiff promised him a lot of work cleaning up some land and debris and then reneged on their deal. It's the case of Mother Trucker. I've been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Mr. Miller, you are suing Mr. Daniel for $2,050 that you say is the balance of a truck that he owns you that you have a lien on. Tell me what happened. Well, I met Daniel several years ago through a mutual friend and it seemed like he was always down on his luck. So when this came up that uh, I could get this truck at a reasonable price, uh, he needed help with his business. So I figured I'd just go ahead and get the truck and sell it to him on payments and help him boost his business up. Why though? What's in it for you to do that? Nothing. Not a thing. Well, there had to be something in it for you, because most people don't go around looking for people down on their luck and giving them $4,000, you know, paying for them $4,000 trucks and then taking on the debt of, make, of having them drib and drab payments in. There had to be something in it for you. Well, we were going to open a business and start uh, clearing lots in South Florida. Okay. So you all were going to open up a business and you wanted to be able to have him be your guy who would do what? Uh, haul the, the limbs and trash off. Okay. And why him? Well, if he's somebody he, who always seems to be down on, on their luck, why did you want him to be your guy and buy him a truck? Well, he, at the time, he seemed to be very trustworthy, and he's a pretty good tree trimmer. Okay. All right. So uh, you get the truck, and how much are you into the truck for? 4840 Yep. Okay. So, um, did you have an agreement with him in writing about what exactly was going to be the payment plan? Did you have anything in writing with him, a promissory note? No. It was all verbal, and I sent you all the text messages. All right. Uh, Mr. Daniel, let me ask you, what was your version of what the agreement was? The gentleman tried to get me to work for a company that he was forming with his son. His son is actually the person who had the money and was putting out the licenses. I don't even know why I'm dealing with him. It's not his money. It's Teddy's money. Um, along with another business partner, his friend, Anthony, who was providing the work at the time. And uh, I was leery about it because I had just went through a bad situation. Uh, but he seemed trustworthy. I'm, honestly, he was about the most trustworthy person I knew at the time, I thought. I, I'm amazed that we're even here. Right. And Dave's um, the one. The reason you're dealing with Dave is because this is all about the truck that Dave arranged for you to get, right? I guess. But it would be Teddy's money, Teddy's company. So I, I don't even know if this result. Would you talk to Teddy? Teddy or who did you talk to, Teddy or David? Dave. Okay. Well, then we all know why we're talking to Dave. All right. So now hmm. tell me, what was the original agreement regarding the truck? How are you going to pay for it? Essentially, I'm supposed to be doing this work, but it kept getting delayed, and I was about ready to leave the project. He called me one day and told me I needed to come over. So I came over. I rode with him over. They looked at a truck that could pull this trailer, but it didn't have a hitch and whatnot. Would this work for it? And I'm like, Sure, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not sure about this business because work hasn't happened. And he just hands me the title and says, see, I'm serious. And the title was in whose name? The other person. The seller. They and had then, nothing to do, the seller. So he says, see, I'm serious. And what else does he say? 
to, to hang on and he would get this work started and whatnot. Right, but he, he wasn't giving you a gift of, of a truck. I mean, wasn't there some agreement about how you'd pay for it? Not, not at this point. How do you accept the truck without having a clear, you know, well, really? Um, I was supposed to be doing a whole bunch of lots, 32 lots at $1,500 yes. a piece. So this would have been easy. And he's just like, we'll worry about it in the future. I'm, you know, we're, I'm serious, you know, hang in there with me. So I did, and I registered it. Mr. Clean Miller, title. can I ask you a question? Um, I, I see text, but by the time there's text discussing anything, he's already had the truck. So did you, in fact, say to him, we'll work it out later? I just want you to know I'm serious and all this other stuff? Uh, no, we agreed on the payment back was supposed to be $500 a month. And that is covered on a text message from him uh, on December 29th, 2020. When did he get the truck? Uh, beginning of November. Right. So December 29 is two well, months hey. after that. So what was the discussion yep. in the beginning of November? And where is any evidence of what the deal was then? It was all a verbal agreement. And what you're seeing on that text message uh, reflects what we talked about. So on December 29, Mr. Daniel, you send a text to him that says, I'm capable, I think, of 500 to 1,000 a month get that truck paid as fast as I can. That certainly doesn't sound like a gift. Did you in fact send 500 or $1,000 every month? Not every month, and there wasn't an agreement to send 500 or 1,000 every month. That's what I'd like to get to here. Okay. I was also made to employ his friend who was supposed to stay, you know, be a helper and do this business. I ended up employing him for almost two months that was supposed to come off the truck, too. How much was supposed to come off I'm the getting... truck for employing someone for two months? Uh, we were supposed to work it out later. Can I, can I just suggest to, to you that you two part. are not gentlemen who should work things out later? Okay? Yeah. Well, I've learned that now. Have you? Thank because you. you should learn that when you can talk. All right? So I, I'm, not, I'm not quite getting this. Like, you're supposed... You hired someone, you paid someone, they worked for you, and they got money for working for you, and somehow that's also going to pay your debt on the truck, but you have no evidence of it whatsoever? Do you have a text that huh? says that, that he's supposed to take money off as a result of employing the person? No, I, don't, I don't have a text for okay. that, no. Now, Mr. Miller, where in this text, that's two months after the fact, am I supposed to glean that he's supposed to pay $500 a month? All it says is, with new work, I think I'm capable of paying $500 to 1000 a month. That doesn't tell me what the original agreement was. And in fact, what he says is, that way I can get it paid as fast as I can. So it, it implies that the original agreement is less than that. I personally think that the original agreement is, oh, we'll work it out later. And then everybody thinks that they'll work it out later. And we have a name for people who do that. We call them litigants. So what ends up happening after about a year a year's time, he ends up paying you how much before you decide you're going to repossess the truck? Uh, he had paid $2,800. Okay. And um, you repossessed the truck when? December of 2020 what? One? 2021. On what authority did you repossess the truck? With what legal uh, right? On a text message dated November 12th of 2020 uh, from Daniel... It says, everything I think you want, the keys are on the tire, in case you ever have to rescue me or you feel like I haven't done you right and you can come and get the truck. Okay. So what makes you think that that gives you a legal right to take it? When I handed him the title, I filled out the back of the title as lien holder. You did? Yes. But now, so here's where we are. You do not dispute that there is $2,050 owed on the balance, correct? You dispute that you should have I do to pay. That. You do dispute that. Tell me what you believe is owed. Uh, there, he's missing the $290 given to him on December 3rd on the second attempt when he does steal the truck. Well, tell um, me about him stealing the truck. When does he steal the truck? Let's back up. What is it? December 2nd or 3rd, he shows of up what in my year? house. 2021. Uh, 2021. Okay. Shows up at my house drunk with his son drunk and they're telling us <laughs> we're taking it there's nothing you can do about it just step back and i'm like wait what are you doing and they're like well uh we could work this out what do you got in the house you got tools what money you got and i'm like look i got 40 dollars cash i have a job tomorrow and i was already going to pay you the day after 
Uh, when had been the last so, time you had paid before that? November 17, 2021. You had How much had you paid? Here. That was a that was 500. And what had you paid so, in October? Uh, I didn't. Uh, October and September, I did not pay. Okay. What about August? I don't, I don't remember at the moment. Okay. I don't have. And according to you, Mr. Miller, how many months had he missed? Uh, several. He finally paid in September for June, and I did not receive any more money until so, October. Uh huh. And then that's when we went and got the truck in December. Okay, so you get the truck, and, and he once was you get the truck, for, you know that you were never placed as a lien holder. Like he's got a title that doesn't have a, a lien holder. How did that happen? I don't know. I called the DMV. I went up there to get the title. They wouldn't tell you. They wouldn't I was give hand, you. I was handed the title and told to hang on. Right. That we he were never serious. signed the lien stuff on the title like he no, says he we did. We talked about it a, a month later after the first attempt of them taking the truck. And when he was telling me the date of that, that text is because he had already taken the truck, he was telling me if I didn't come give him money, bring the title because he wanted to write a contract at that point. He wanted to add himself. Oh, he got all official said, hey, then, Mr. Miller, did, didn't you? Did, now you want yeah, a contract. Yeah, we, you want the title on your already? side. You want. You know? All right. Look, Mr. Mr. Daniel, I need to know um, what record keeping do you have of what payments you've made and you haven't? Do you have receipts for all the payments you've made? Or did you make them all in cash and let him keep track? Uh, I did them all in cash. Okay. All right. It, it, so here's what's going to happen, folks. You you go and you take his truck, and then um, he goes over. He pays you two ninety. Then you give him back the truck, right? Yes. Why don't you then sit down and do a promissory note and make sure you're the lien holder and all that other stuff? Because I don't buy for one stinking second that you are the planner that you say you are. Oh, I signed a lien holder on the back of the title before I gave it. You are not a planner, Mr. Miller. You are no more a planner than he is. So, you know, buying this truck for a guy who you say is always down on his luck. And, you know, why? Because we're going to, you know, oh, we're all going to make a lot of money. when And turns out nothing materialized. All right. So, Mr. Miller, tell me why, when he gets the truck back, you don't sit there with your nearest crayon and roll of toilet paper and write out a contract and a promissory note and a payment plan. I should have. Yeah. That was my mistake. And, I should have. And you, that's when you get the title back and you say, let's go to the DMV together. I need to be listed as a lien holder. Because nope, being he did listed, not produce the title. Right, but being listed as a lien holder is the only thing that lets you repossess stuff. Otherwise, you got to go to court and get a court order to repossess stuff. So well, like I said, when I first got the truck, I filled it out as Mr. a Mr. Miller, holder. let me be very clear about this. You are lying. <laughs> you are lying. You know you're lying. I know you're lying. He knows you're lying. Because had you done that, the DMV, when he went with that title over there, would have registered you as a lien holder. And we all know they didn't. And we all know that it was really kind of a bizarre Come over. We're going to have all this money. We're going to do all this business. We're all going to make money. We're going to do this. Here, you can pay me little by little. There was no planning involved. You are not the kind of guy who thinks about filing the lien. All right? So, no, I don't believe you. And you have zero proof of it. Let me just add that. Right? All right. Now, Mr. Daniel, um, on a separate occasion, after that repossession that you got the truck back, what happens outside your house on january 1st just as the sun was basically cracking he sends the person he swore he wasn't dealing with that cost us all over 20 grand his son 20 grand whatnot he sent him to my house with a bunch of automotive disabling devices boots and he was just going to lock the vehicle down this guy's up on my property and he is a very large intimidating figure my fiance and, and at the time, what, one or two month old child were out there enjoying the sun coming up and she comes in in a panic. There's some big guy on the property and he's doing something to your truck and I come running out. Uh, I turn on the camera. Let's and see, it's let's see the video. Baxter. Give me a second. Permission, nor do you have permission. You've been told to leave my property. You need to get off my property. You need to do it now. I don't care what he told you to do. What you're doing is illegal. That's right. Get with him. Go ahead and leave. All right. Tell him. All right. Are the police called that day? Yes. 
Okay. And he was informed to leave me alone and to not have contact at that point. Okay. Mr. Miller, I need you to listen to what I'm about to say to you. You are not a lien holder. You got it? Yes, ma'am. Don't touch that truck. You are now a judgment holder because I am issuing a judgment in your favor. So you will do what every other picayune judgment holder on the planet has to do. You cannot help yourself to his truck in the middle of the night. You cannot send Anthony in the middle of the morning. You cannot steal it when you're drunk with your son and then give it back. You can't do anything to his truck without a court order. So you will have a judgment now and then you will do what other judgment holders do, which is you go through the court process to levy against his property if he doesn't pay the judgment. That is what you are gonna do. Whenever any of us gets a judgment in court, one of two things is gonna happen. We're gonna get paid the judgment and then we go off on our merry way or we take the judgment and we use it as a doily for our beer and then we have to go through the trouble of getting it enforced, right? Yes, ma'am. You are in that position, okay? So that is how you're gonna proceed. You are never again gonna touch the guy's truck. I am issuing a judgment against you, Mr. Daniel, in the full amount of the $2,050, because you have zero records to contradict that, and he appears to be giving you credit for stuff you don't even have proof of paying. Good luck, gentlemen. You heard what the judge has said. Uh, you understand now. You do owe him that money, 2050. But he can't touch your truck, okay? Understood. I owe him two grand by the court. I, I don't agree with the amount, but it is what it is. And at least some part of this is going to be followed legally for once. But you still have the truck. So, you know, good luck hanging on to it. We'll see what happens with it. Mr. Miller, you heard what the judge yes, said. Sir. You're not a lien holder. And, and like she said you're a liar. You know, she just didn't believe much of what you said. How, how do you feel about that? Well, I'm not a liar. I filled the paperwork out as a lien holder. So, well, the judge and says you're I not talked a lien to the holder. DMV and they said there were issues with the title. All right. Well, here, bottom line, you have a judgment now. And uh, yep. that's for $2,050. You can do what you want with it and proceed, okay, legally. Yep. But you can't go steal his truck. All right. You understand that, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good enough. Harvey? Yeah, Doug, this is a tough one for the defendant. There has to be a specific agreement about promising work. There was no specific agreement. It was too vague, not enforceable. The plaintiff wins. Who reacts better in a crisis? You or me? Ha! I'm dying to hear what your answer to that is. <laughs> well, let's hear who do yours. You, wait, who do you think reacts better in a crisis? It depends on what kind of crisis That's right. That's exactly my answer. I would say, I would say probably most crises that, that strike in our household you react. Better. Yes, that's Most, what I would say. Yeah, yeah. I would Definitely. say I, I, when I lose my temper, I lose my temper. I have right. I, I have yeah. some trouble with that, and then you talk me off the ledge a little, right. and then I, you know, and it's that usually has something to do with the kids, and right. then you're like, hold on, hold on, right? They're not in gangs, <sighs> they're not doing drugs. I'm like, oh, your standards are really low, right. you know. <laughs> um, but I, I, it is funny that a guy with your, uh, you're, you're pretty much a, a, a cheerful calm person but then and the kids and i make fun of you right. because sometimes little crises a little crisis will throw me just throws you right off into the gutter right. and, and you start with this is a problem of biblical proportions right. and we start making fun of you for you right you just like right. you just lose yeah. it it's really yeah. weird yeah. but you know well medical crises i think i'm better when something is you know somebody's hurt oh yeah i'm sick i usually because you got I'm, hurt a lot when you were young yeah, always i was always getting stitches i was always breaking this or that or you know so uh those things don't phase me too much